Python 3.12 adds type parameter syntax and if you bring your experience from a language like C-sharp or Java, you immediately recognize what it does. But if you are not used to generic programming, you might wonder what all the fuss is about. In this video, I will show you three things. What are generics? What role do they play in Python? And I show you experimental syntax to use the type information at runtime. Let me start with the first question. Why use generics? This question is easy to answer in typed languages like C Sharp and Java, but not in a dynamic language like Python. So it must have something to do with types. Let me show you. Here is a list with three integers. I print the sum of elements. This works because each list element is a number. But Python lists are heterogeneous. I add a string and run the program again. You know why this does not work, but you had to execute the program. To spot the problem earlier in the process, type hints can be used. I need to import list. I run pyrite to check the types. And the problem is recognized before executing the code. What you just saw is type hint checking that is possible for a while now in Python. Notice that I had to annotate the list manually. What if I could pack this list in a class that forces the list to always contain integers? It is the type parameter syntax that allows me to do this elegantly in Python 3.12. I create a class that contains a list of integers. I create an instance and print the total. And that works. But now I add a second class for floats. and create an instance. And that works as well. But I created duplicate code. And the problem gets more severe when new list classes are added to the system. This is where generics can help. I create a generic list class. and remove the other classes. I replace the integer list and the float list. And that does the trick. At this moment, the benefit may not be clear, but what happens when I run the code? Everything works like before. And pyrite? Looking good. But now I pack strings in the list. Even if the list class is a generic class, the type info when instantiating them allows Pyrite to check for the proper types. But until now the type information was just used to check types. And I have a question. Can Python actually use the type info at runtime? Let me give you an example where I needed this in the past. Here is a website. I enter these numbers. But of course the types are strings. They need to be converted to an int and float. For this I create two converter classes. I start with the string to integer converter. As you see, the convert method takes a string and if it is filled, it returns an integer. I want this converter to be really forgiving. If the value was an empty string, it should default to integer 0. I call the converter with a valid and empty string. And that works. The converter works as expected. I create the float converter. It 
it defaults to zero if the value was empty. I call the converter with a valid and empty value. And that works. But I have created a lot of duplicate code. I create a generic converter. Notice the generic parameter t. I can use it as a return type like this. But now I have a question. How do I actually convert the string? For this I need to know the type of t. And this is where it gets a bit experimental. This returns the type of t and I can use it like this. If the value is an empty string, I instantiate without a value, which should return the default value for the type. I remove the other converters. And use the generic one. And here. And for the float. And here. I check if that works. Yep, it does. Isn't it cool that the converter class does not specify any return type? Only when a converter class is instantiated, the type is specified. I must warn that retrieving the type information is experimental and I can't predict if this works across Python implementations and future versions. If you have a better way or can point me to other documentation that gives more info on the subject, write it in the comments. And that is all for this video. If you want to learn more tips and tricks in Python from me, click on the screen and we'll see each other in the next video.